I know exactly the day I opened my mouth to sing. It was a Sunday, all the relatives over the house. It was an old Italian song. And I didn't know what the hell the words were. I was like six, seven years old. It was, it come it. All of a sudden, I just start singing along with it. It just seemed natural. I'm milling about with Derek Wayne Johnson, who is the director of Stallone, Frank, that is. Hi, Derek. Happy New Year. Hi, Happy New Year. Thanks for having me on again. Sure. So we were just discussing my little background. So tell everybody what it means. Well, it, it's actually very special. It's a it's a shot from the movie Stallone Frank, that is. And you'll find out that 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 base back there is a very special base that belonged to one of Frank's uh, dearly departed friends. So uh, it has a lot of meaning to it, actually. Yeah, I was uh, actually just on Facebook and saw that you were doing a t-shirt sale and I said, I want the Valentine t-shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, on the, the Stallone Frank that is page? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, hey, a Valentine t-shirt would be great. I mean, it, you know, I, I have no words for that. I think that maybe they should put that together or we could do it, I don't know. Well, tell us a little bit about where Valentine comes from, because a lot of people, myself included, had absolutely no idea that Frank Stallone was in a band, let alone a couple of bands. Yeah, uh, it's pretty wild. You know, well, just for starters, anyone that's seen the original Rocky, uh, you see Frank in the beginning singing kind of doo-wop or whatever with a, a local group. That's Valentine. That's his his band, they were a band before that movie came out. And uh, Sly, you know, he needed someone, you know, free and cheap, I guess. And uh, his brother and Valentine came in and they wrote a song and, and there you go. So yeah, that was actually his band that existed before the movie and existed a few years after, so. And I'm amazed at how many musicians actually know who he is and and no pun intended seeing his praises uh daryl hall john oates richie sambora yeah it's pretty wild uh you know not to give anything away to potential audience but i mean it's kind of interesting that the three that you just named either tried out for valentine or were a part of Valentine or just gig with Valentine. Like it's, it, it's pretty and crazy that in that little area in that moment of time, that kind of talent was just mixed in with Valentine. It's pretty wild. Yeah, so let's kind of go back to the beginning for you. I imagine this took a couple of years to put together uh, you to, for you to get all these interviews with everybody. Uh, well, we actually started in 2017. So it's been a, a few years. We came up with the idea in 2016, but we started filming in 2017, finished in 2019, and here we are in 2021 and it's finally coming out. And a lot of that has to do with, with obviously the pandemic uh, slowed things down on distribution. But gosh, we filmed, I can't remember how many states. I mean, California, Florida, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New York. I know I'm leaving something out. New Jersey. Did I say Florida? I mean, it's like we were all over the place filming because Frank just knows everyone. And um, we probably filmed maybe 50 interviews. I, I really can't remember, but it was it was pretty wild. Were there any interviews that you wanted? I mean, we, we do see that that Frank Stallone was in a couple of films like Hudson Hawk and Tombstone. So did you want to get to Bruce Willis? Did you want to get to Mickey Rourke for Barfly? Yeah, and we tried it just, you know, scheduling, things like that. Uh, even though, you know, it takes a few years to put these things together, scheduling a, a big actor is, it can be tough. Uh, you mentioned Bruce Willis, Mickey Rourke, John Travolta. We just, they just weren't available. So we just couldn't do it. And, you know, that's the name of the game. But... The ones we did get, I mean, it's wild. Of course, Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Billy D. Williams, the list goes on. And I love how you got Arnold and Frank in the gym. 
was like, it, that was perfect. That was Arnold's idea, actually. Uh, you know, as a director, you want your, your subject or your talent, you want it as controlled as possible. And if you look back here in the background, that's my director's chair that for documentaries, I usually will put the subject in that chair. So like a hundred celebrities have sat in that thing. And obviously I wanted to sit Arnold down in that chair and just make it look as best as it could. Arnold was like, no, no, no let's just do it at the gym. So we're like, what? It's going to be loud. There's going to be people. He's going to get mobbed by fans, but which all happened. But he was so cool because he was on the moment that he showed up, he showed up on a bicycle. You don't see that in the film though. In his little bicycle entourage. And we filmed him for hours there at the gym and he and Frank working out. And what was cool about Arnold is he knew I was dying with the sound and everything that was going on. So I was like, hey, I'm the director. I was like, Arnold, after we're done in, inside the gym, can you do me a favor? Can we get you outside the gym in the parking lot? Say what you said in here, but I just need to make sure we get good sound. And he was like, yeah. So it worked out because we get the craziness of the gym and those two guys together, and then we get Arnold outside. So, but to end this little story, uh, when we were done, Arnold was like, we were telling him bye and we we're leaving and thanking him and everything. And he was, he just hung around for a minute. He was like, so you liked my idea, right? And we're like, yeah, of course. He was like, it's like almost he wanted reassurance that the gym was a good idea and it was. So thanks to Arnold. I love how uh, you, you have to stop yourself from doing Arnold. <laughs> oh, I, you know, Arnold, Sly, all of those guys, excuse me real quick. Uh, I, yeah, it, it, you have to stop. Even to their faces, you, you have to check yourself before but you impersonate them. Frank had no problem doing his brother every single time he talked about him, he would fall into his, his brother's accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is pretty hilarious. That's actually probably the funniest part of the movie is when he's doing his brother and John Travolta at the same time. It's classic. <laughs> classic. And he does that in his live show and it just keeps the audience roaring. It's so funny. Well, you know, obviously the title does suggest that um, Frank is trying to escape the shadow of, of, of Stallone, of his brother, Rocky, who he was known as Rocky's brother for some time. And I really feel like you got into that essence in the film. What's well, funny, on the title, Frank actually came up with that. He owns that title. He's very proud to say that. So that was his idea. Um, but yeah, it really captures that essence, as you said. I mean, here's a guy who was entertaining audiences before his brother. You find out in the film, his brother actually one night carried equipment for him. And then all of a sudden, a few years after that, it's flipped. And a little movie called Rocky comes out. And all of a sudden, Sly goes up and the shadows created and Frank is like, what, what? Like, I'm the performer. And you see this kind of this journey that they're on for all these years where there's a friendly rivalry there, a, a brotherly rivalry, but also like they really are proud of each other. And you see that in the film. Yeah, there's a lot of like brotherly jibbing and jabbing going on too, which, you know, happens all the time, even if siblings aren't famous. Right. And of course, you, you got to stick around for the end credits to really get uh, to, to see a little special thing we threw in there with the brothers. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, Derek, um, when Rocky was written, do you think that, that Frank Stallone was an inspiration? Because we, we learned that he's an amateur boxer. Actually, no, he did the boxing after Rocky. Okay. Which was, I'm glad you brought that up though, because think about the audacity there. Think about like your brother just made the best boxing movie of all time. 
and you're going to now start boxing yourself. I mean, talk about wearing a target, you know, on your, on your forehead. So, I mean, it was an interesting move, but Frank also is a boxing historian. So he, he knows everything about boxing. Um, before that, and of course, Sly knows his fair share, but um, inspiration, no, but very interesting that, that Frank got into boxing after that movie came out. I mean, that'd be like, uh, I don't know, like Bruce Lee's brother all of a sudden trying to be a, a, a full contact martial artist. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting. Well, they had a lot of competition, obviously, going on between them. Yeah, uh, to this day. It's, it's pretty funny to watch. Yeah. Now, um, in terms of uh, some of the stuff you got from, from their mom, from Jackie, she, if, I'm, if I believe correctly, wasn't she involved with spirits? Wasn't she really into all of that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, she was, a, I believe, a psychic, I want to say. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know that much about, we, of, about that side of her. I just, I remember that growing up, seeing her on TV and, 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 and hearing about that. But I will say she was one of my favorite interviews because she was just, I don't think we quite captured this, what I'm gonna say, but she was so raw and real it, to the point where like, I couldn't put it in the film, if that makes sense. It was, she was so, such a character. And, uh, you know, and of course, uh, the Stallones just lost her a few months back, unfortunately. But I mean, I think she was 97 or 98. So she lived a very long, interesting life. Oh, yeah. I, I imagine there are so many stories that you had to cut out from this. I, I did. She was, she was a character. What else uh, did it make it that you wish did? Oh, wow. That's a good one. Um, gosh, you know, I really can't think. I'm so, I, I have a true, uh, my mind is blank. Uh, I don't know, Robin, I can't think. I think it's because I scrutinized each piece of footage so much for so long that I just can't, I, I don't have an answer on that one. Well, there is another interview that I want to talk to you about. And he was one of my all time favorite entertainers was Danny Aiello. Mm -hmm. And of course, we we just lost him as well. So, he how did he know Frank Stallone? Well, uh, well, you know they did um, Hudson Hawk together uh, oh, yeah. thirty years ago, or or longer. And you know they both have mutual friends. Uh, one in particular, Sly's best friend John Hertzfeld and Danny were really close. And I believe. Uh, uh, you know, so there's just this whole connection there where Danny and Frank have known each other for 30 plus years, maybe longer. I'm not sure. Danny was one of my favorite interviews because that was one of the best days I've ever had on set. He was so lovable. Oh, I know. So, like just everything about him. You know, we interviewed him in his home in New Jersey and he just he didn't want us to leave. We didn't want to leave. What a, what a wonderful guy. And, you know, I did have to cut around him quite a bit because, <laughs> rest in peace, but he would go off topic and because he's so awesome that he would go off topic and I'd be like, Danny, we got to talk about Frank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Frank's a great guy. And so we, we didn't get enough, I don't think, of, of Danny uh, talking about Frank. But, you know, he, he loved Frank. And he, he was quite the crooner as well. Uh, I don't know if they ever actually had, had the chance to perform together. That I'm not sure. They certainly complement each other's music. I remember that day I left with a couple of CDs that, that Danny gave me. Um, yeah, I, they definitely had that in common. I, I don't know if they ever performed together though. Did you, uh, did you get this story from Frank about how he got Frank Sinatra's cufflinks? No, and it's so funny you mention that, you know, you, you see that in the film and it's never said how or, or why. And the reason is, is when we filmed it, 
he's about to go on stage and perform. So he's wearing Frank Sinatra's cufflinks. And I want to say the shoes he were wearing, uh, it was also another star, but I can't remember. So he just, yeah, I guess he's gifted these things or collects these things, but it was a real time and I didn't really get to ask him the backstory of that. And then I just kind of forgot. So when I'm putting it together, I'm like, wow, that's actually really interesting. We don't know how he got them, but he got them. He's wearing them pretty wild. Yeah, I'm sure, I am sure those cufflinks are worth a pretty penny. <laughs> I would imagine so. <laughs> Absolutely. And Frank's a collector of stuff. I mean, he has, he has everything, everything. Well, he had so many, what broke my heart about this was learning that he had so many near successes, came this close, and then boom, gone. Yeah, and that's kind of the, one of the, the threads, I think, of the story is a taste of success a major failure, a major success, a little failure. It's just this roller coaster ride in his life. Um, and, and, you know, like for example, you learn in the film, you know, he gets nominated for a Grammy and a Golden Globe, but he gets passed over for an Oscar nomination. And it's just. For the song Far From Over, which I used to love that song from Staying Alive. Number one hit. Uh, outdid Michael Jackson on the charts for a brief moment in time. Yeah. Pretty wild. I mean, how do you get that kind of success? And then, you know, you have another failure. It's, it's a, it's certainly a roller coaster ride for sure. Well, we're not quite sure if he's still bitter or, or, <laughs> <laughs> or he's gotten over it and he's trying to move on. I know the answer to that, but I'll, I'll, I won't say. <laughs> uh, it's been you know that happened this is this is gonna uh this well maybe i shouldn't say this but that film and that song came out the year i was born let's just say i don't you know i'm i'll be 38 next month i hope he's gotten past it i'll put it that way yeah do you feel like you've like you've exhausted the stallones now and like you'll be on to your next subject <laughs> Ooh, wow, that's the million dollar question. It just keeps happening. I, I don't even like, you know, I did King of the Underdogs about John Avildsen, who directed Rocky and the Karate Kid. Naturally, Sly was a part of that. And then from there, Sly offered 40 years of Rocky, which I was on your show for, of course. Yep. And then uh, my producing partner, Emmett James, came up with the idea for Stallone Frank, that is. And, and I thought it was a great idea, so we ran with that. And then, you know, there may or may not be one or two things coming up down the line, I, you know, maybe. But it, it is a certain kind of a unofficial trilogy, if you will, with Stallones, Rockies, Avildsons, Karate Kids. And, but I never set out for that. But uh, I've had a really wild time with it. I'm very proud. Oh, I bet. I bet. So uh, are you invited now to, uh, to their homes for special dinners and such? Have you become part of the family? I, I, I'll let them have their version of that because we wouldn't want to step on any toes. But yes, it's, uh, you know, been to each of their homes several times and always a good time, um, whether it be for work or, you know, screening a film or, or whatever. Uh, you know, it's, they kind of, um, the brothers, the Stallones, they've kind of uh, taken me under their wing, I guess. I mean, I've been friends with them for several years now. And again, we keep doing these projects and I actually heard from Sly last night, which was nice. And it's just, uh, it's, it's just really cool. They're, they're a great family. They're fun. Um, much like the Avildsons, when I did King the Underdogs, they really took me under their wing. And now the Stallones have as well. So, hey, I, I'm just enjoying the ride. What do you want people to come away with learning or discovering about Frank Stallone? Hmm. Well, from my experience, you either don't know he exists 
or you know he exists for the wrong reasons. For example, he did, did you know, some reality shows where like world's dumbest videos, right? So he's just goofing on some videos. I, so many people tell me that's how they know him. Really? Well, yeah, just little goofy things like that. Or they'll know him from just being Sylvester's brother. What you're going to learn from this film is those are just, well, being Sylvester's brother is a big thing, of course, but those are just parts, they're aspects of Frank. You're going to learn that this guy is super talented. Again, Grammy and Golden Globe nominated singer. He's a songwriter, a guitarist. He sells out shows all the time. He's been performing since he was, I think, 15 and nonstop. And he's done so much. I always say this, and uh, I've never actually said this to Frank. I wonder how you would feel about it. But jokingly, I say he's like a normal, intelligent Forrest Gump in the sense that, do you remember how Forrest just had this crazy, awesome life experience, yeah. experience of meeting presidents and da, da, da. But of course he was slow. Yeah. Frank's not slow. Frank's actually very intelligent. But Frank has that sort of trajectory where there's always a story. He's always doing something and meeting someone from Muhammad Ali to, you know, Sinatra. And you're like, wow, he's not just Sylvester's brother. He's not just the guy on world's dumbest videos or whatever it was called. He's a, he's a, he's a force. He's a talent. And uh, I think he gets his due in this film. Yeah, he does. And I love how he says, I used to be Frank Stallone slash musician. And then I became Frank Stallone slash Rocky's brother slash musician. Yeah, it's funny. The way he says that is like, it's, it, it always cracks me up. He'll say, you know, I was used to being you know, Frank Stallone, musician. Now, then it became Frank Stallone, something else, Rocky's brother. And it's like, what's the something else? I always thought that was funny because he was just rolling, you know, saying what came to mind. But I thought the way he said something else, I'm like, what does that mean? But his point obviously is made that, you know, how do you, how do you go from being the front man of a band and you're holding your own and all of a sudden you're a fictional character's brother. That's got to be tough on someone. And it, and it was, he's over it now, but oh, that's you know, good. Well, even one headline you see in the film, instead of Rambo, it was Wimpo. Now that's just cruel. You know, it, it, so he had to, he had to put up with that stuff for a long time. And I don't think he'll have to after this film. Yeah, he was quite an interesting subject. Derek, that was really a lot of work on your part, I, I, I can see from what you're telling me. And it was really well done. So congratulations. Another really great Stallone documentary, really. Thank you. Thank you. It, it was a lot of hard work to make this film over the last several years. And, you know, and now it's it, here it is and it's then it's like okay well that was a great four or five years what do we do now <laughs> and then we'll just do something else so uh but thank you for for having me on and for uh the kind words and you know again the base that's behind you it just i'm gonna so go beautiful. practice that when i get off <laughs> there you go and you know i just hope people really enjoy the movie i think it's a fun movie so that rambling, is but alone Frank, that is. <laughs> All right, take good care. Great Happy time. birthday. Oh, well, thank you. It's In advance. coming right up. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, Happy New Year, and I hope to see you soon. Absolutely. Thanks again. Take good care. Bye-bye. Bye. I always wonder. What has kept me in this game? But, you know, I just keep coming back to it. I love it. Always news. Always refreshing. Always candid. Always billing about. Robin Milling delivers what celebrities are saying to you. To you. To you.